hey there, are you ready to like really shake things up in the museum world? Because today's deep dive, it's all about this kind of radical idea. What if museums weren't just about, you know, preserving the past, but about actually giving visitors the tools to create the future? Yeah. We're diving deep into the Musée de la Civilisation de Québec, the MCQ and their M-Lab Creaform. Yeah. It's like this cutting edge space, really rewriting the rules of visitor engagement. It really is fascinating to see how like some museums are really like approaching their roles so differently now. Yeah. It's almost like they're saying, hey, our collection, it isn't just for admiring from afar anymore. It's like a toolbox, a springboard. Go be creative. Right. It's like stepping into a museum, but then you find out you're not just a guest. You're like a co-creator. Exactly. And leading the charge in this whole new world is uh, Clémence Foisy Marquis. Now, her background is impressive. Narrative designer, museographer, content strategist. She's done it all Why? in the museum world. And her experience, like we see from her work at institutions like the MCQ, it gives her this like really valuable perspective mm. on integrating digital initiatives yep. in a way that's not just trendy, but truly transformative. Okay, so let's talk about the MLab Creaform itself. Okay. Now, I have to admit, when I first heard Museum Lab, I pictured a computer lab, like with a few dusty microscopes, you know. Right. But this is something completely different, yeah. right? Oh, absolutely. Think of it more like, you know, when you fuse a traditional museum space and a high-tech fab lab? It's laser focused on digital creation and exploration. So it's the best of both worlds, artifacts and algorithms all nice. in the same place. What I find really interesting is the MCQ's partnership with Creaform. So tell me, what does an engineering firm bring to the museum? It's actually, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant strategic move by the museum. Creaform, they're a leader in 3D technology mm -hmm. and they inject this real hands-on practical element into the M-Lab. So instead of just, you know, passively observing cultural heritage, Visitors are empowered to interact with it in a tangible way using cutting edge tools. See, this is what I'm talking about. Forget staring at dusty relics behind velvet ropes. Right. The M Lab is all about rolling up your sleeves, digitally speaking, and engaging with history on a whole new level. Exactly. It's a prime example of this movement in the museum world to just shatter those traditional barriers between the institution and the visitor. Hmm. They want people to feel like stakeholders, collaborators in the stories being told yeah. within their walls. It makes perfect sense, right? Especially in our digital age. With information overload at our fingertips, museums need to offer something more immersive, more participatory, to truly stand out and resonate with visitors. Yeah, they're moving beyond simply being the keepers of knowledge. They're evolving into platforms for knowledge creation. Okay, so let's unpack some of the M-Lab's most intriguing initiatives. This is where it gets really exciting for me because they're playing with this fantastic concept of remixing their digitized collection. Yeah, it's a truly innovative use of technology to reshape the relationship between museums and their audiences. Imagine this. You're in the museum and you're captivated by a specific artifact or a certain theme. So you go online, you go delve into their digitized collection, and you use those elements as building blocks for your own creative projects. It's like unlocking a treasure chest of history and culture and then getting to remix those treasures into something totally new. Exactly. So what kind of projects are they encouraging at the M-Lab? One of the things that makes the MCQ's approach so fascinating is their commitment to open access. Comas Fuazi Marquis talks about how they make high-resolution images of their collection available under a Creative Commons license. Wow. That means anyone can use, adapt, even remix these images for their own purposes, as long as they give credit to the museum. Wow, so someone could create a digital collage inspired by an ancient mosaic. A musician could sample a historic speech for a new track. Even a fashion designer could draw inspiration from centuries old garments. That's precisely the point. They're breathing new life into these collections, making them dynamic, making them relevant to the present moment. And who knows what unexpected creative sparks might ignite along the way. It's a brilliant way to bring the past to life, not through static displays, but through active engagement and fresh interpretations. But it's not all digital at the M-Lab, is it? Right. Kamasa also mentions this fascinating initiative called Le Musée Vivant, which incorporates 3D printing. Tell me more about that. Le Musée Vivant is a prime example of how the M-Lab merges digital and physical experiences. They'll invite students to pick an artifact that speaks to them. And then, using 3D modeling software, they create a digital replica. The most exciting part, they actually get to print their models using the lab's 3D printers. I'm already blown away by the possibilities. These students aren't just passively observing history. They're recreating it 
in a tangible form. Right. It's like next level learning by doing. Absolutely. And as they're going through this process, they gain a deeper understanding of the object, the object structure, the materials used, even the craftsmanship involved. They're connecting with history and technology all in a single powerful experience. I can only imagine the sense of pride and accomplishment those students must feel when they hold their 3D printed creation like a tangible link to the museum's collection. Yeah. It really does blur the lines between visitor and creator in such a profound way. You're right. And that idea, that blurring of lines, it's a recurring theme in discussions about the future of museums. It's about moving away from that traditional top-down approach mm. where the museum dictates the experience mm. and toward a more collaborative model where visitors have a voice, where they can actually shape the narrative. It's about empowering visitors, saying this isn't just our history, it's your history too. Now go make something amazing with it. And that brings us to some broader questions Clemence Foisy Marquis raises about this type of digital engagement. Is confining it to a lab setting enough? Or should this level of creative participation extend to the entire museum experience? Those are really thought-provoking questions. How do you effectively scale this kind of engagement? How do you make it a part of the visitor experience as a whole? That's the challenge, isn't it? And then there are also logistical hurdles. How do you document and preserve the digital creations? born from these initiatives, the 3D models, the remixed images, the soundscapes, they become part of the museum story too. It's fascinating because you're essentially creating an entirely new category of cultural artifacts born digital, co-created, and constantly evolving. Right. It challenges our very definition of what belongs in a museum and how future generations will experience and interpret these evolving forms of cultural heritage. We're talking about navigating complex issues, digital preservation, intellectual property, and even the ethical considerations surrounding the remixing of cultural material. It's a whole new world for museums to navigate, but you can just sense the excitement in Clemence Foisy Marquis' work as she explores these possibilities. Absolutely. And she poses a particularly provocative question in her writing. Should the entire museum become a laboratory? Now, that's a bold idea. It makes you wonder if some museums might resist relinquishing so much control, transforming their, you know, carefully curated spaces into what could feel like a free-for-all creative playground. And she addresses that concern with this compelling analogy. She envisions the museum as a kitchen, like a dynamic space where visitors can experiment with different ingredients, information, resources, cultural artifacts, and in the process, cook up something new and exciting. I love that analogy. It flips the script on how we interact with museums. Instead of passively consuming what's presented to us, we're invited to become active participants, chefs in our own right, adding our own flavor to the mix. Precisely. It's about recognizing that visitors bring their own unique experiences and perspectives to the table. And those perspectives, they enrich the museum's narrative in profound ways. It's about time, honestly. For far too long, museums have dictated what's important, how it should be interpreted, even how we as visitors should behave within their hallowed halls. Clemence Foisy Marquis argues that this more open participatory approach, it's a direct response to that outdated model. It's about dismantling those hierarchies, fostering dialogue, recognizing that knowledge creation, it thrives on collaboration. It reminds me of that old saying, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. This is about taking that to the next level. Exactly. And it's not just about making museums more fun or engaging, though that's certainly a happy side effect. It's about equipping visitors with the critical thinking skills and digital literacy that they need to navigate an increasingly complex world. It's about giving them the tools to become active participants in shaping their world, not just passive consumers of culture. Precisely. However, it's important to acknowledge that even with such innovative approaches, there are always areas for improvement. Every experiment has its hiccups, right? What are some of the things that stood out to you as potential challenges or areas for growth, even within the MLAN's innovative framework? Clemence Foisy Marquis raises some valid points about the accessibility of the MLAB's digital resources. While they've done an excellent job of making those high-resolution images available online, accessing the full scope of their digital collection, it requires creating an account, which could be a barrier for some. That makes sense, especially when your goal is to encourage widespread engagement and participation. Any extra steps, no matter how small, could discourage some people from diving in. 
Exactly. And she also raises questions about the visibility of the projects created in the MLab. She suggests that showcasing those works more prominently, perhaps through online exhibitions or even physical displays within the museum, it would effectively demonstrate the power of visitor creativity and the learning that's happening within the lab's walls. It's about completing the loop, right? Showing visitors that their contributions are valued, that they're shaping the museum's narrative in a tangible way. Absolutely. And that ties into another point she makes about the preservation of these digital creations. As more museums embrace digital engagement and co-creation, they'll need to create robust strategies for documenting, archiving, and preserving these outputs for future generations. It's one thing to launch a website or host a workshop, but ensuring those digital traces remain accessible and meaningful for years to come it's a whole other challenge. These are questions museums are grappling with right now. You're right. It requires a real shift in mindset. Museums have traditionally been so focused on preserving physical objects, but now they need to apply that same dedication and expertise to digital materials. It's about recognizing that these digital creations, they hold just as much cultural and historical significance as the physical artifacts housed within their collections. Exactly. And it's about more than just preserving the final product. You know, it's about capturing the process, the stories behind these creations, the collaborations, the challenges, the triumphs, all of that adds to their historical and cultural value. Right. The 3D printed object, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. The real magic lies in the journey of discovery, experimentation, and creation. Exactly. And documenting that journey ensures that future generations will have a much richer understanding of these digital artifacts and the context in which they were created. Ultimately, that deeper understanding, those connections to the past, present, and future are at the heart of what makes museums so vital. Precisely. And it's inspiring to see institutions like the MCQ embracing digital tools and participatory practices to redefine what those connections can look and feel like. It's no longer just about peering through glass at objects frozen in time. It's about engaging with history, culture, and technology in this hands-on, truly creative way. And sparking curiosity, encouraging experimentation, empowering visitors to become active participants in shaping the ever-evolving story of human culture. Well said. But before we get too caught up in these grand visions of the future of museums, we should take a closer look at how Clemence Quasi-Marquis sees the MLab's approach playing out on a larger scale. I have a feeling she has some pretty insightful thoughts on the matter. So we've been diving deep into this idea of the museum as a laboratory, a space for co-creation. But you know what really struck me in Clemence's work? She doesn't just throw out this radical concept. She, like, backs it up with concrete examples of how it's actually playing out at the MCQ. And one of the most compelling aspects of their approach is how they're using technology to democratize access to their collection. Yeah. It's not just about, you know, putting a few high-res images online. They're really leveraging things like photogrammetry and 3D scanning uh -huh. to create these incredibly detailed digital models of their artifacts. Photogrammetry, 3D scanning, those sound pretty high-tech. Yeah. Can you break it down for those of us who might not be, you know, fluent in museum tech speak? Sure, sure. So think of photogrammetry as a way to stitch together like hundreds, even thousands of photographs of an object taken from every angle oh. to create this single, incredibly precise 3D model. Wow. It's like those um, panoramic photos on your phone. Yeah. You know? But on this whole new level of detail and complexity. So instead of just seeing a static image of, say, an ancient vase, right. you could like virtually rotate it, zoom in on the intricate details of its design, maybe even create a 3D printed replica. Exactly. And that's where 3D scanning comes in. It uses lasers mm -hmm. or structured light to capture the shape, the surface details of an object, uh -huh. creating a digital blueprint that can then be used for all sorts of things, yeah. from research and conservation to, as you mentioned, 3D printing. It's like they're unlocking these artifacts from their glass cases, bringing them to life in the digital realm. Yeah, and it makes them so much more accessible, not just to you know researchers or academics, right. but to anyone right. with an internet connection right. and a thirst for knowledge. And that's precisely the goal. Exactly. To democratize access to cultural heritage. Yeah, and empower people mm. to engage with it in new and meaningful ways. But it's not just about access, is it? There's also this incredible potential for education right. and even artistic expression. Absolutely. Imagine a student studying ancient Roman architecture. Instead of just reading about the Colosseum in a textbook, they can now explore a detailed 3D model 
zoom in on the arches and columns, maybe even import it into a virtual reality environment and experience what it was like to walk through those corridors thousands of years ago. To experience history firsthand, even virtually, would be incredible. Yeah. And for aspiring artists or designers, having access to these digital models just opens up so many creative possibilities. Okay, sure. Like, they could use these models as inspiration for their own work, right? Mm -hmm. Incorporating elements of ancient design into contemporary sculptures, jewelry, furniture. Exactly. It's like the end lab is becoming this incredible incubator for creativity. It's blurring the lines between the museum, the classroom, the artist's studio. And that's a really important point to highlight. Plamont's Fuzzy Marquis, she stresses that the M lab isn't meant to be this isolated space within the museum. Ideally, its influence, it should like permeate the entire visitor experience. So it's not just about having this dedicated lab. It's about weaving these ideas of digital exploration and co-creation into the entire museum. Exactly. It's about creating a seamless experience where visitors can transition effortlessly from admiring a physical artifact to diving deep into its digital twin, that maybe even, you know, trying their hand at remixing those digital elements into their own creations. It's exciting to imagine museums embracing this holistic approach. Yeah. But I can't help but wonder about the logistical challenges. Yeah, for sure. Like, managing a physical collection is already a huge undertaking. How do museums handle the storage, the preservation, the accessibility of these massive digital archives? That's one of the biggest hurdles museums are facing right now. Unlike physical artifacts, which might require controlled environments, careful handling, digital assets, mm. Well, they come with their own set of challenges. Yeah. You have to worry about things like uh, file formats becoming obsolete, you know. Oh, right. Software becoming incompatible, yeah. even the risk of data loss or corruption. It sounds like a digital curator's nightmare. It definitely requires a different skill set right. and a significant investment in the right technology, the right infrastructure. Museums are having to adapt quickly, learning from other fields yeah. like libraries, archives, places that have been grappling with digital preservation for a while now. So it's a learning curve for everyone. What are some of the strategies museums are exploring to tackle these uh, digital preservation challenges? Well, one approach is to adopt standardized um, file formats and metadata schemas. Okay. This makes it easier to share digital collections with other institutions and ensures that the data remains accessible even as technology evolves, you see. So it's like creating a universal language for digital cultural heritage. Exactly. Another key aspect is ensuring redundancy. They're not just saving those digital files on a single server tucked away in the museum's basement, right? Right. They're creating multiple backups, often stored in different geographical locations, to safeguard against data loss due to things like natural disasters or technical failures. It's like the digital equivalent of those ancient scrolls that were copied and distributed to different libraries to ensure their survival. That's a great analogy. And just like those ancient scribes, today's digital archivists are playing a vital role in preserving our cultural heritage for future generations. It's a huge responsibility. And it makes you realize that this shift toward digital engagement in museums, it isn't just about you know flashy technology or trendy buzzwords. Yeah. It has real implications for how we understand, interpret, and preserve human history and culture. We hit the nail on the head. This isn't just about museums, like staying relevant in the digital age. You know, It's about ensuring that the stories we tell the knowledge we share, the creative sparks we ignite, they continue to resonate and inspire long after we're gone. And as much as I'm fascinated by the uh, technological innovations happening at places like the M Lab, I think it's that sense of responsibility, that commitment to the future of our shared cultural heritage that truly sets them apart. Absolutely. They're not just like embracing the possibilities of the digital age. They're approaching them with a sense of purpose, a deep understanding of the impact these tools can have on how we connect with the past, understand the present and even shape the future. It's really inspiring to see. And I'm, I'm eager to see how these ideas continue to evolve in the years to come. Speaking of the future, there's one more question from Clemence Foisy Marquis' work that I wanted to circle back to. She asks, what if, instead of being preoccupied with preserving the past, museums became more focused on equipping visitors with the tools to shape the future? That's a powerful question. Yeah. And I think it really gets to the heart of what makes this whole discussion so fascinating. 
it challenges us to rethink the very purpose of museums in a world where technology is constantly evolving, blurring the lines between creator and consumer. It's almost like she's asking us to imagine museums, not just as repositories of the past, but as launch pads for future innovation. And I have to say, I'm intrigued. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you see places like the M Lab contributing to that vision? That's a topic that deserves its own uh -huh. like, deep dive. I know, right? But I can offer a few initial thoughts based on what we've discussed so far. I think I think Clay Moss is really onto something profound with this idea of shifting the focus from uh, preservation to empowerment. And. That's an exciting thought as we move to the last part of our deep dive. You know, when I think about museums empowering visitors to like shape the future, it feels like a natural progression from everything we've been talking about. Yeah. If we're already, you know, blurring the lines between observer and creator, why not take it even further? Exactly. It's like Clemence Foisy Marquis is encouraging us to see museums not just as places to reflect on the past, but as springboards uh -huh. for innovation, for tackling present challenges, for envisioning new possibilities. I'm really captivated by this idea. So what could that look like in practice? How do we go from like digitally remixing a Roman mosaic to say, designing a more sustainable city or engineering a solution for clean water access. It's about recognizing the power of creative thinking. Right. Of cross-disciplinary inspiration. So imagine you're walking through an exhibition on ancient irrigation techniques. Okay. And then you have the opportunity to participate in a workshop on using modern hydroponics to address food insecurity in urban environments. That's a fantastic example. It's about drawing those connections between the ingenuity of the past and the challenges of the present. Right. And then like giving visitors the tools and resources to experiment, collaborate, maybe even develop their own solutions. Precisely. And it's not just about technology, right? It's about fostering this mindset of curio experimentation, it's, creative problem solving. It's about giving visitors the skills to become active citizens in their communities. Exactly. Empowered to make a difference. And I think that's where the true potential of this shift lies yeah you know? it's not about turning every museum into like a tech incubator or a design lab but about cultivating a space where people feel inspired equipped and empowered to take what they've learned and apply it to the world around them it's about breaking down those walls between disciplines between institutions and their communities yeah. and saying hey we're all in this together let's use our collective knowledge creativity and ingenuity to build a better future I love that. It's about moving beyond that traditional role of the museum as a like a passive repository of knowledge and embracing a more dynamic, a more engaged and ultimately more impactful role in shaping the world we want to live in. It's a vision that feels both really exciting and essential, especially in these times of like rapid change of complex global challenges. As we wrap up our deep dive, I have to say I'm left with this renewed sense of hope and possibility for what museums can be. Me too. Me too. It's inspiring to see institutions like uh, the MCQ paving the way, demonstrating the power of curiosity, creativity, and a willingness to just, you know, embrace the unknown. It makes you realize that museums aren't just about preserving the past. They're about shaping the future. And we all have a role to play in that story. Well said. And for you listening, we want to hear your thoughts. How do you think museums can empower visitors to become like agents of change? Head over to our website and share your ideas. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep imagining the possibilities.